Hello, Sector Watchers. Welcome to the show. This is the 106th episode of Sector Spotlight for Tuesday, the 30th of November, recording it on Monday, the 29th. My name is Julius de Kempenaar and I am presenting to you from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Um, the regulars may have noticed that I skipped an episode of Sector Spotlight last week. Uh, there was a rerun on the channel. The reason for that is uh, not so nice because on Wednesday the 17th of November uh, I found my wife at the back of our property. Uh, we live on a pretty big old livery, uh, old horse boarding stable. Um, I found my wife at the back of our paddock drenched in blood and completely confused, um, having no clue what had happened. Um, and to cut a long story very, very short, uh, she was rushed to the ER um, and spent six days in the hospital. She suffered uh, fractures to the skull, um, lot, lost a lot of blood from her ear, um, severe head trauma um, with a lot of risks and a very scary uh, last 10 days for me and my daughter. Um, Again, very long story, short, uh, she's back home, she's doing relatively okay, she has a few issues left, but if all goes well, fingers crossed, then uh, she should recover um, very, very well, if not completely from it. So we're very, very grateful that uh, we've actually been super lucky given the situation. Anyway, that was my excuse for not being uh, on the channel last week. Now... Those of you who know me that know that I love the interaction. Uh, I started replying to a lot of emails uh, before all of this happened, so I already had a little bit of a backlog. It's probably got a, a little bit bigger, but please keep them coming. If you've got anything to share, uh, want to mention, feedback, etc., please use any of the handles on the screen and you will get a response. Um, if not very, very soon, it will be later, but I usually try to respond to each and every one of you. Because I missed last week's show, uh, we missed the seasonality uh, episode. So what I'm going to try to do is actually cramp this show full of information. Because what the plan is, is that we will go over the seasonality stuff. So the current uh, rotations and try to compare that with the uh, seasonal trends that we, uh, that we have present. And because today, tomorrow when I record it, is actually the, uh, the last day of the month, I will go over the monthly charts for the month of November. I know the month is not complete yet, so there is still a possibility of some weird things happening. But I'm going to take my chances and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, go over the monthly charts for some asset classes and some sectors. Uh, and unless... Something really, really crazy happened today when you're watching this. Um, we should be good to go. So, no further ado, let's, uh, let's start with this episode of Sector Spotlight. With regard to the look back and the overview of last week's rotations, um, I don't want to spend too much time on that given the um, what we need to do on seasonality and monthly charts. So I'll do a very uh, brief rundown um, using a combination of weekly and daily RRGs, basically coming to uh, a current view of the S&P 500 at a, at a higher level. So here's the RRG for the cyclical sectors on a weekly basis. And the way I look at this is it's still pretty good. Um, we see energy, um, sorry, uh, consumer discretionary in the top right, losing a little bit of momentum, but it's still going well. We see financial still inside the leading quadrant, moving almost vertically down. Uh, that means that there is a loss of relative momentum going on, but the relative strength itself, the RS ratio is still very stable. So that relative uptrend for now <clears throat> is still intact. We have uh, real estate inside lagging, but it's starting to pick up a little bit. It's the, it's the weakest of these four, but it's starting to pick up. And then the most promising one probably is the material sector, which is inside improving. But as you can see, 
the uh, velocity, the week, the week to week length, the segments is increasing. It's, it's telling us that there is increased power in this material sector. So overall, the cyclical sectors are still uh, pretty much in, in good shape. If we go to a quick view of the daily, then we see a little bit more uh, of a mixed picture. Uh, discretionary picking up, materials losing, real estate picking up and financials um, on the daily scale back down in, in lagging. Uh, but, you know, as, as we've learned from the weekly, I think these can all resolve very rapidly uh, in a proper way. And, and this rotation even could help real estate to come out of that lagging quadrant on the weekly RRG. <clears throat> If we move to the defensive uh, group, um, and I think that's still, this one is still sending us the clearest message um, with a positive outcome for the S&P 500, because these defensive sectors are all still very, very clearly um, in lagging and, and in relative downtrends. Utilities is picking up a little bit over the last two weeks, but it's still at a very low RS ratio reading. Staples is inside lagging and moving further down to it. The last two weeks, very, very stable, but the tail is still pointing downward. And we've got healthcare with a very long tail, long, powerful move into lagging. Um, now momentum is stabilizing, but relative strength is still going lower on the relative strength axis. And as you can see here over the last 10 weeks, all of these sectors have uh, been underperforming the S&P 500. Now, the, uh, the final group, that's the sensitive sectors, um, they, I think, also give us an idea that, because these are the, the, the decisive, they, they give us, they can tip offense to, uh, or defense. And, and what you can see here is that I think that the majority of these sectors, that means technology, which is actually very good because it's rotating um, from leading through weakening and then back into leading, that is a strong move. So that relative uptrend in technology is, is picking up a new up lag. We see energy, which is losing momentum, but at a very long, powerful tail, still heading higher on the relative strength RS ratio scale, which is good. We see industrials rotating into the improving quadrant at a, at a good heading, and that is good. So the, as a matter of fact, the only sector very clearly in the sensitive ones on a negative track, on a negative rotation, is communication services, XLC. So all in all, I think that the market is still in good shape. Now, obviously, we had a, uh, we had a nasty move last week on Friday, uh, and that is visible here on that daily S&P chart, the daily SPY chart. And you see that today the market recovered a little bit. It closed the gap. So the big question is what's going to happen um, uh, in the coming days slash weeks. Now, having said that, the, the, the market in general is still in good shape. If I go to the, uh, to the weekly version of the S&P, then I think that we can state that this uptrend is still there. We're still well above the previous high, which was around 452. Um, as long as that holds, there's no problem. A few shows, a few episodes ago, we spoke about uh, negative divergence. And I mentioned that it was gone after a while. That was after we started to, to move back up, that negative divergence sort of was gone. But you can see that with the rise here, the RSI didn't really manage to push above. So the negative divergence wasn't really gone. It's just got, it, instead of a really downsloping line over the, over the peaks in the RSI, it's now becoming a little bit more horizontal. It's still going lower. It's a little bit more horizontal and in the MACD it's it's really still visible as a negative divergence <clears throat> that's sort of hanging over the market as a dark cloud I think that's that's a little bit of a risk that I'm taking into account keeping it as an option that there that we may need to see a little bit more downside coming off this nasty week last week but I think it should all happen within the boundaries of that rising channel. So the question is, did we get a real good buying opportunity last Friday or will we get uh, better ones in the weeks ahead? Uh, going back to that daily S&P chart, you can see that that negative divergence is now really there. And uh, we have to monitor the market to see whether the dip on Friday was the result of that negative divergence 
or is there a little bit more in store? But as you can see here in a little bit more detail, um, the area between, let's say, 445 and 450 is, uh, is still a very strong support area. And as we will see later in the show, the general trends are still uh, very solid for the market to go higher or uh, at least continue in, in the current long-term uptrend. Um, I'm keeping an open mind for this divergence. It's something that's on my radar as a potential risk. But for the time being, I think that as long as 452 holds, um, we're in good shape. And, and these dips inside that channel, I see them as buying opportunities if we get the chance. I wouldn't be surprised if there will be no chance. I would just move higher uh, from here. But only time will tell. So what do we have in terms of seasonality? Let's have a look. I'll start with the, um, with the spreadsheet that the regulars will know. This picture shows you the um, percentage of outperformance over the last 20 years. So whenever that sector was outperforming the S&P 500. Um, and I'm looking for a really high or really low numbers because in case of a really low number, it means that most of the time the sector has been underperforming. That's also information. Quick look at this chart and spoiler alert, there are not a lot of takeaways to get from seasonality for this month, unfortunately. Let's have a look what we have. Um, Communication Services, XLC, was showing higher, was, was outperforming the S&P 500 in 77% of the cases. And that was with a follow through in January at 69 and in February at 54. So from a seasonal point of view, that should be a pretty good month um, for communication services. Technology, on the other hand, only outperformed the S&P 500 in 37% of the cases. Um, that goes up to 65 in January and then it drops down again to 45 uh, in February. Um, I've circled real estate because 58 uh, is a nice number, but you'll see why, because it has a very high uh, average return, which will which is on the next slide. And utilities uh, traditionally do well uh, in, in December with 63%. It's not fantastic. I'd love to see it above 70 or below 30, but there's just nothing there. It's all, you know, around 50, 58, 47, 47, and then there's a 53, which is like toss of a coin. Um, and then there's 37 for tech. And we have got utilities at 63, and then that goes to 45 and 50, which is essentially just, you know, whatever the market gives you. Um, if we look at the accompanying return numbers, and this um, table gives you the average return for each sector over the last 20 years, then you see that communication services, which 77% of the cases was outperforming, has, a, has an outperformance of 1.1% over SPY historically. Technology, on the other hand, has an underperformance of 80 basis points under SPY historically. Now, here's the reason why I've got real estate circled, because that's a 2.7% uh, outperformance historically, which is pretty good. But the, the average number of months or the number of months um, is at 58, which is not fantastic. Utilities then um, shows a, a relative outperformance of 0.7, 70 basis points over SPY over the last 20 years, and that goes to zero in January and minus 0 0.3 uh, in February. Again, as I told you, there is not a lot to, uh, to gain from this. We, we would expect um, a good performance for communication services and a bad performance for technology. However, when we switch to the current rotations, we see this RRG. Now, let me highlight those sectors for you. So we've got communication services here, which season, from a seasonal point of view should be good, but it's probably the worst sector of the pack. It's, it's pushing down into lagging uh, and, and there's no sign of improvement. So there is a complete 
um, disconnect between the current rotation and what we can expect from a seasonal point of view. That's not aligning. That doesn't uh, make for a good trade. That doesn't make for a good outlook. Technology is, is the same, but the other way around. But because from a seasonal point of view, technology is expected to be weak with an underperformance going into December. But when you look at the current rotation, it's actually just coming out of the weakening quadrant and rotating back into leading, which makes it one of the stronger sectors from a rotational point of view going into December. So here also um, a disconnect between the current rotation and what we could expect based on seasonality. And then finally we had utilities, which also should give us a, um, a good performance or expected good performance going into December. And I mean, it's, it's, it's way well into the lagging quadrant. The last week, week and a half, it's been picking up a little bit of momentum, but this position still very low on the RS ratio scale with only a little hiccup to be seen inside the lagging quadrant from a momentum point of view. Doesn't make me feel very comfortable um, going with this rotation in terms uh, or, or as an outperformer going into, uh, into December. Um, let me show you the table that I'm working on with a data viz specialist. We're, we're still working on making this more granular, but this is the, um, the, the, the monthly version. And um, what we see here and what we want to see is the, um, is the fat greens and the thin reds. And as you can see here is the, uh, the communication services, um, which, is, which is pretty good. We looked at that. Uh, we need to look at technology. That is, as I said, expected to be an underperformer, but it's going the other way around. And here is utilities, which is um, relatively good, but not at a very high level. So here, this is just a different way of uh, representing the data that we just saw in that spreadsheet. And if we then wrap all of this information up in this table, then we have communication services with a strong seasonal pattern, 77%, expected outperformance of 1.1%, but a super negative rotation on the RRG. By the way, the beta of that uh, sector is 103, so that's aligned with the market. That doesn't make for a good trade, that doesn't align. Utilities, expected strong seasonal, 63%, uh, and an outperformance, expected outperformance of 0.7%. <clears throat> nice from a seasonal point of view, but as you've seen, the rotational tail on the RRG, that's still in lagging, so it's a negative, and I could add a little bit of a neutral based on the strong heading in which it is turning right now, but it's still very early cases. And... Um, the beta of this sector is 0.47, which makes it a very defensive sector. Uh, and as you saw from the start of the show with the uh, cyclical still in play, uh, I don't see a lot of strength from defensive sectors. So I have a very hard time seeing utilities outperform or being a strong sector going into December. And then finally, technology expected to be weak from a seasonal point of view at 37%. Uh, and a uh, loss of 80 bips below SPY historically, but it's got a very strong tail on the RRG. And here the beta is 104. It's one of the sensitive sectors. Um, but still, I mean, with the expected strength of the S&P 500 longer term, um, I, I don't see any tradable information, any uh, anything that, that, uh, that aligns with current rotation. So... Basically, I'm going to pass on anything rotational uh, from a seasonal point of view for this month. Let's quickly move to the monthly charts for November. And I have made a selection of that universe uh, because we don't have the time to go over all of them. And they're not all that interesting. Um, one of the most interesting charts on an asset allocation level that I'm watching is the chart of the US dollar. And this is the US dollar index. We've been discussing the breakout of this double bottom for a while. That is now very, very clear. And as you can see, we're, we're pushing against the um, 
uh, old support line now offering us resistance. Now, based on the height of this pattern, which is roughly 89 to 94, the target uh, based on that pattern is around 99. That's well above. So that's around this area. So we have to see in a few coming weeks, probably, whether that resistance is strong enough to push the US dollar index back, maybe even temporary before uh, it moves back up or whether it just crushes that, uh, that old support line now resistance and just moves up and continues its rally. Um, if we translate that to Euro dollar, then uh, we're looking for prices around 111 in Euro dollar. And this is the inverted head and shoulders that we've discussed before. By the way, this is a weekly chart, just to show you a little bit more granularity. The commodity charts from a monthly perspective are worth looking at. And um, I'm always amazed when this happens, because if you look at the DJP chart, and you see where we ended the high of last month and the resulting uh, bounce lower that we saw in November. Uh, I mean, this now is very, very clearly acting as resistance. And this is a low that goes back to 2009, February 2009. And the market is now responding to that level as resistance. I still find that remarkably after so many years of doing technical analysis. Um, what does it mean? Uh, that we're probably seeing a little bit of pressure from that level. The, the uptrend that is on the move uh, out of that 2020 low is still intact. There's no doubt about it. Um, so we'll have to wait and see how much time the market needs to digest all that uh, selling pressure. But from the looks of it, uh, we are very likely on the way of re reversing that very long term downtrend into a longer term uptrend. And we see a similar pattern with GSG, slightly different composition of this index, but here also um, bouncing against resistance. And if we, if we move higher, then the next level will be around 2250. But again, um, on all levels, this looks like a big turnaround in, in commodities, um, reversing that super long term downtrend into a more meaningful uptrend in coming months. Could probably even be years. Now, high yields is, uh, is an interesting chart at the moment. Uh, this is the third time that, that we're pushing against that resistance level. So it's becoming more and more meaningful. And you see how that is happening over the last five, six months. Here also a little bit more granular detail with the weekly chart. Uh, this is out of my, my set of charts that I use for Sector Spotlight. And you can see the rollover and you can see that we're all already have been breaking below that important support level on the weekly chart, um, expecting a little bit more follow through. And that gives me the, uh, the comfort to say that this is probably a new peak in the making, sending high yield bonds lower in coming months. And then finally, the uh, stock over bond ratio, SPY IEF, uh, that uptrend is still intact. This is the monthly chart, uh, which is literally still moving higher. I put in a new high and a new closing high. So um, stocks still to be preferred over bonds from a longer term perspective. And with regard to sectors and the S&P 500, um, the story is actually, well, you could say rather boring or maybe monotonous, monotonous, what's the English word, monotone um, story because it's all going up. Well, almost going up. Let's very quickly go over all of these monthly charts. Here's the S&P 500, a new high, a new closing high. That uptrend is fully intact. And as you know, I have the, um, the, the downside risks add it uh, in percentage terms on every chart. I'm not going to read them out, but you can see them. Um, and it's adjusted based on the uh, on today's closing price, actually. So for the S&P 500, it's still looking pretty good. If we go to communication services, it's one of the weaker sectors. Um, it's pushing against resistance. And as you can see here, that 265 low, that's previous month's low, I think that should not be taken out. If that's been taken out, in coming weeks and in the coming month, 
uh, especially at the close of December, that could be a deterioration for communication services. We're not there yet. This uptrend is intact. Consumer discretionary, no doubt about it. Very strong trend, you know, new high, new closing high. Very good for that sector. Staples, uptrend still intact. We pushed to a new high, we bounced back. We didn't maintain the levels there. Um, this, the, the steepness of that trend is not all that, but it is definitely still an uptrend. We go to energy. That is a, well, from, from measured from here, higher highs, higher lows, the uptrend is intact. It's not making new highs, not making new closing highs. We're actually moving to the ups, upper boundary of a longer term falling trend channel. But that is months that we're talking about. So in the near term, that is still looking pretty strong for the energy sector at an absolute price level. Financial sector, moving up after the breakout, that trend is continuing and we're still holding up above the previous lows. So that is good. If we go to healthcare, that is also potentially a weaker chart because we have this low here that was set um, in October. This is the month of November. That's definitely not making a new peak. If we now go below that, uh, what's that level here? That's about 1450. I'd be careful with, uh, with the healthcare sector. If we go to industrials, um, peaked higher, didn't maintain that level. We're in that sort of short, small consolidation. As long as we hold above 825, there's nothing wrong with the industrial sector. We can still move higher. We go to information technology. Well, that, that is a very strong chart. We don't use, uh, should waste too much time on that. Uh, materials, again, like um, industrials, coming out of that consolidation, we peaked higher this month, but we dropped back below. Uh, if we can maintain above 492 and a half, that material sector is still in good shape. We go to real estate, having a little bit of trouble with that previous high, but the uptrend, there's no doubt about it. That is still very strong. There's a little bit of downside risk, but overall long-term trend is still good. Utilities, that is a, a sector that's having trouble with that overhead resistance, but this is a very defensive sector. So it's not strange that it's having trouble breaking higher because all the cyclicals are doing that. Um, the uptrend, higher highs, higher lows is still intact. It's a little bit of a mess here, but if you look closer at the, the lows are still higher, the highs are still higher. So that's all good uh, and that's the that makes all these sectors go up uh, they're they're all in their uptrends uh, and, and and there is no sign of any weakness on these monthly charts as usual we summarize all this information in uh, a table and as you can see the performances of last month were mixed uh, there were actually a couple of sectors that were showing a negative performance um, a few put in new all-time highs and new closing highs. But the most interesting observation is that all of these sectors, and obviously also the market itself, are in an uptrend. That is, you know, it doesn't get any stronger than this. Now, if we summarize that, then we can see that 60% of the market capitalization and adding up the weights of the sectors has made new highs, new all-time highs. 48% has made new closing highs. And you can see the downside risks per sectors. I usually take the first and the second support level, major second support level. Um, for the market, it comes down to 8% as the first and then the next one is around 20%. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes Sector Spotlight for this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. Sector Spotlight airs every Tuesday from 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern here on Stock Charts Television. And I hope to see you again next week, same time, same place. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.